Hey friends, I'm Eric Pratt, Senior Vice President of Gun Owners of America, and no doubt a lot of you are concerned about the ATF so-called ghost gun rule, which seeks to regulate homemade firearms through agency action. Well, I have some good news for you. The ATF had seemingly shut down Polymer 80 a few months ago, but because the ATF got hit recently with a preliminary injunction against them, Polymer 80's website is back up and you can purchase their Second Amendment protected goods for now. Although there's a lot of chatter about the Vanderstock versus Garland case, which challenges part of the rule, we wanted to bring attention to our own case, Morehouse Enterprises versus ATF, which is challenging the entire rule and the gun registration list that the ATF is creating. The GOA case is pending before the Eighth Circuit and our attorney, Rob Olson, recently argued for the repeal of the rule in its entirety. So I wanna let you listen to Rob's opening arguments in defense of your Second Amendment. Enacted and the Congress never considered, but claiming that Congress had it considered these problems that the agency now purports to have identified would have wanted it to be this way. And below, we have a district court that very uncritically just sort of looked at what the agency had done, and even though a lot of these things weren't in the statute, just simply accepted that they were matters of good policy and that the law should be this way. But that is just not the way law is made. Now, we acknowledge that this is a highly technical, complex case that requires a lot of understanding not only of federal gun law, but also some understanding of firearms themselves. And it might be tempting to just sort of assume that the agency with expertise and, and knowledge on the subject matter has gotten things right, and I suspect that the agency might get up here today and ask the court to simply trust that they understand the way these things work, but that would be a major mistake we submit, that there are mistakes in this final rule that are not just wrong, but they are embarrassingly wrong. Um, and I would like to just sort of highlight a few of those today, because this is just a, a voluminous uh, final rule, but the first thing that I'd like to talk about is, is weapon parts kits, and this idea that the, the agency admits that these, these collections of parts do not have a frame or receiver, which is required to be a firearm, but nevertheless somehow constitute a firearm. And on the theory that now ATF has put forward, firearms do not have to have frames or receivers. And they say this actually three times in their brief. I'm reading from page 24. Nowhere does the act or the common sense definition of weapon suggest any requirement that the weapon include a frame or receiver. Reading such a requirement into the statute would undermine Congress's intent. That's not Congress's intent. That is in the statute. The statute that defines a firearm says it's either a weapon or the frame or receiver of a weapon. It talks about where you mark a firearm on the frame or receiver of a weapon. The whole purpose of the Gun Control Act was to move away from regulating all gun parts so the statute doesn't define frame or receiver. That why, is correct. Why doesn't ATF get some, you know, Chevron deference or something along those lines um, in defining those things? As, as the Vanderstock courts that recognized in Texas, they are taking items that they just admitted are not frames and receivers, a kit that does not have a finished frame or receiver, but using this concept of readily that even if it's not finished, even if it's not complete, even if we otherwise wouldn't regulate it, the idea that you can finish it into a firearm makes it a frame or receiver. Did you say you think the statute defines firearm to include a frame or receiver? It, subsection A says a weapon. Subsection B says the frame or receiver of any such weapon. The frame or receiver is a firearm. The frame or receiver itself that. is a firearm, correct. But a firearm could also is also a wep any weapon. That's correct, Your Honor. Those are separate. Separate things. Separate uh, meanings of firearm. They are. Okay. <clears throat> and so, so, I mean, we know that firearms have frames of receivers, but here ATF is saying that they do not have frames of receivers if they are in a weapons parts kit. On the other hand, we have silencers, which the final rule now claims silencers have frames or receivers. No one has ever thought this until now. In fact, we have ATF for decades. Back in 1985, we have a letter that I'm not sure they knew they wrote, but it says a, a silencer does not have a frame or receiver. But now, 90 years later, after the National Firearms was passed, now they do have frames or receivers. So we're left in this weird situation where guns that we all know have frames or receivers don't, where silencers that no one ever thought did do, and it just it makes absolutely no sense. Um, ATF wants to 
codify this classification system that they have where you send us a product, a sample, we will give you back a letter and tell you what we think this thing is. And in that part of the regulation, ATF says no one else can rely on these letters except the specific person to whom the letter is addressed. And with respect to no other firearm with, other than the specific sample that was submitted. But if you look elsewhere in the final rule, when it comes to defining what a frame or receiver is, ATF says, well, our definition doesn't apply to everything because we've been making it up for years, and so we can't write a definition that encompasses all firearms. So go back to our classification letters that we'd issued in the past, and everyone can rely on those. They just said no one can rely on those. And now they say you can rely on them not just for the particular make model of firearm that was submitted, but for variants thereof. So they're, they're speaking out of both sides of their mouth. Both of these things cannot simultaneously be true, but they're both in the same rulemaking. Well, let's go back. I'd like to go back to, to Judge Grunder's question. The statute doesn't define a frame or receiver. So would you disagree that the, um, that the uh, government can, through regulation, define, give a definition? I think they could. Get, they have given a definition. In, back in 1970, it never worked, and they are trying to update so they're definition. trying to update the right. definition. So we all agree that that's okay to do that. If, um, if they do something that But you don't the like the update. That's so correct. that becomes the question is, is the update so out of the bounds of, of rational government rulemaking that, that we can't, that we should enter an injunction on a temporary basis is what you're saying. And, and I'll, I'll give you an example here. There was a, a letter that ATF issued about a month before the proposed rule was promulgated, and someone sent in, and I'm, I'm not, you can't make this stuff up, a metal water bottle, like I have on the table there, and said, can you classify this? Because I, here, on a piece of paper, I think, well, here's the instructions, I think I could take this water bottle, turn it into a frame or receiver, add some other parts, and turn it into a firearm. Can you tell me what this metal water bottle is? And you would think this would be an easy question, but the agency actually wrote back, this is exhibit 42 in our complaint, and they used the same principles that are in the final rule, that an incomplete frame receiver, can, if it can be readily converted to one, is if a weapons parts kit, other parts can be added, could be a firearm. And they conclude in that letter that a metal water bottle might actually be a firearm under the, under the Gun Control Act, and in fact might be a machine gun under the National Firearms Act, and they can't say for sure. And that was the letter that ATF wrote applying the principles in this final rule. Um, similarly, the plastic water bottle that my co-counsel has on the table, ATF says a silencer, which the statute says has to be uh, designed and intended for a specific purpose. It has to be for use, either a part, combination of parts. It has to be for something. ATF says this plastic, uh, is, I'm sorry, the final rule says that a, a silencer is now just <coughs> contains all the parts necessary to function. Well, if you took a plastic water bottle and slid it over the end of a barrel of a firearm, wrapped a couple rolls of tape around, you have all the parts necessary to function as a silencer simply by pulling the trigger. So they remove all of the mens rea type of concepts from the statute. And so we have plastic water bottles or silencers, metal water bottles or machine guns. You can rely on our, our letters. You can't rely on our letters. It just, it's, this is what the Supreme Court, I think, had in mind just a couple weeks ago in Bittner of the United States says, when the government speaks out of both sides of its mouth, no one should be surprised if its latest utterance isn't the most convincing one. Um, this, these are just examples of what happens when a decision is made to order bureaucrats, regulators, to enact a political decision that Congress considered did not enact in recent legislation, regardless of what the law says, regardless of what the past 50 years of agency precedent say, and irrespective of any technical precision. But as the judge in the Vanderstock case recognized, these are criminal statutes, precision is required. And he said, precise wording demands precise application. And I see I'm already eating into my rebuttal, so if I can reserve the rest of my time. Well, there you have it, folks. We are proud of our man, Rob Olson, fighting to protect gun owners. You can know GOA is making waves because the ATF is having an absolute meltdown. They released an entire letter threatening to shut down any company that refuses to comply with their arbitrary nonsense. But as you well know, that won't stop us from continuing the fight to demolish their unconstitutional gun control. So please help us keep up the winning fight by supporting gun owners of America. Our lawsuits make a difference, and when we win, we win big. 
So please know how grateful we are for your support. It keeps us on the front lines. Anyway, until next time, stay active in the fight and remember to say no to compromise. I'm Eric Pratt. Thanks for watching.